Good afternoon, everybody. I actually wasn't going to uh, video this, but I'm working on uh, an issue with my boat. I've had an issue with this boat and with my Sea Dew, where at one point or another there's a small short in the system, and with the battery sitting there hooked up, you will eventually not just drain the battery, but you'll kill it. It won't take a charge, go buy a new battery, and with the prices of batteries these days, it gets out of hand. I bought a switch that's just a disconnect, so off, on, and it has two poles. So the first issue that I had, this one's already tight. I bought these 20 inch wires to go to the battery, and then I'm gonna bring the other main battery wire here. We'll see that in a second. The problem that, the reason that I'm making this video, one reason is because the terminal ring on this one that I bought was big enough to fit on here. But the existing one that's coming off of my motor right now is not big enough to fit on here. It tops out. So what I did was I needed to figure out, A, what size drill bit to use. And then I needed to drill the hole out and mount this so that I could put the disconnect on. So the way I figured out what drill bit size to use was I pulled the nut off and I went through my drill bit set and I just started putting them on to see if I could slide it over it. And once I got to the big enough where I couldn't slide over it, I went up a couple steps from there just to give me a little wiggle room and said, that should do it. The other problem is because this is a loose wire similar to this coming out of the motor, holding it still while you're trying to put you know, trying to drill through that, it's going to jerk and go crazy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my rusty, I sprayed something on these and I'm going to have to look at my buddy's uh, YouTube to see how to get all this rust off of here. Oh. Uh, but I sprayed something and didn't realize how corrosive it was and it caused these to rust. I love these needle nose uh, vice grips. They're awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the other one really snugly with the needle nose vice grips and that way i'll be able to hold it in place while i'm drilling it and misunderstood will video that for me now so what i have is you can see these two are different this is my positive the red one and this is my negative or ground and uh, neutral you can see that they're different sizes here so i have to drill that out so i'm going to Take these and grab them tight, but I'm overlapping there, so I might have to rethink how I'm grabbing these. Let's see if that's gonna do me any good. You can see now why I need to hold it tight. If you try to put a pair of pliers on that, you'd be having a hard day right now. And it's going to snatch here in a second when it goes through. All right, I'm hitting the... I'm hitting... The actual... The further out to the end you put them, the better they'll grab. You need your glasses, Captain. Yes, I do need safety glasses. You're right. See, that's why I don't want to try and hold it because I knew that it would do that as it tries to go through, as it tries to break through the, the metal there, it's going to go crazy. And so you, what you want to do is have your drill going as fast as possible and you want to go in as gently as possible, very slowly. Now, be careful here. It might be a little warm. It's a little warm, but not bad. And now I can take and get this on here. If I can get a 
good way to get it on here. I might have to trim some of this plastic away or I could come out this side and I really don't want to. Uh, that won't be any problem. I'll just pop that off and go out that side with it. So we're just putting the ground, we're just putting the black on here. The red will still go to the battery. Okay, this goes to the, to the motor block, the engine block, but this is what actually makes, has pulls enough power. This wire's thick enough. This wire's thick enough to pull enough power to turn the motor over and start it. And then you have something like this a lot of times, especially in these older boats. This is an old boat. I got a great deal on it and I love it. It's been really good to me and uh, I enjoy taking care of it. So the problem is this one also will not fit on the terminal. Now that's really small and really hard to mess with. So instead of trying to drill that one out and making a tiny little surface area, I opted to replace this and put a larger one on. Larger one looking more like this, which will fit on there. So I'm just gonna use my crimpers I cut this off, strip it, and then crimp this one on. The only problem is these, the bigger the ring, the bigger the hole is. So it's made for a, a heavier gauge wire, a lower number. This is like a 14 gauge wire, and this will handle, oh, probably about down to a 10 gauge wire. So the lower the number, the thicker the wire kind of like with the shotgun, the lower the number, the bigger the, the bigger the barrel. So I'm going to swap this out. I'm going to trim this off, cut this off, and then strip it and put the new one on. Okay, so I got this piece on, it's on tight. You can pull against it and it doesn't come loose. Now my next problem is, my next conundrum is, if I hook it to the battery side, if I hook it to the battery side, it will always be connected. And I don't know if I want that, even though the positive will be connected. So I don't want the negative to be connected because if there's a short in this part, which this wire is what runs the, uh, the electronics, all your lights and your radio and all your other power devices. So if I put this here, then doing all this other stuff doesn't do any good because I still have a direct connection to the battery on the negative and a direct connection for the same circuit, even though that's black, I couldn't find a red wire in the 12 gauge that I wanted. So uh, to run 20 feet to get up to where I needed it to without tearing apart some 12 2 or something like that. Anyway, so I think what I'm gonna do, this would give me the same as putting it on the battery. But think this through with me. If I put this here, this is what becomes disconnected from the battery when you turn the switch off. So if I go ahead and put the, the ground wire here for the electronics and turn this on, then it will pass through and go to the battery and it will be grounded and it'll work. But, if, but as soon as I cut this off, the switch off here, then that will stop the connection going to the battery and that will mean that the this one no longer has a ground, except it will. It'll be just going to the motor ground instead of to the battery. But that should not cause my battery to go dead. It might cause it to go dead, but it shouldn't cause it to go bad. I'm gonna leave this off for now. And I'm going to think about this some more. Okay, so I figured it out. 
Uh, I'm at my whiteboard in my office and I'm going to show you what I came up with. Um, and in the picture, the last image that I had, there was where I was gonna put the ground wire and uh, for the electronics. And that's what I'm gonna show you now because it, uh, it just makes sense. Okay, so I'm not much of an artist. This is the battery, negative, positive. This is the thick cable, the one that I was hooking to the cutoff switch, which is represented here. This is the motor, which obviously is not to scale, but you can see the prop, so it's obvious that it's a motor. The positive coming off the battery, one comes to the starter solenoid, and the other one goes all the way up to the console and into the fuse block. On the other side of the fuse block, the negative comes back up here. And that's the one that I was trying to figure out that I put the new terminal end on. And that's the one I was trying to figure out where to put it. If I put it here, going back to the battery, or should I put it here, going to the ground on the motor, which is where this, when you complete this circuit, coming from the negative of the battery, up through the cutoff switch, going back to this ground. What I came up with is, if this wire coming from my console goes to the battery and I put the negative, the ground wire from the electronics from the console onto here, then I was gonna have a complete circuit. I was gonna have a positive and a negative, and if there was a short up in here, which is what I suspect that I have, that was gonna negate the whole reason to put this in. So what I came up with is I need to put it on this end the side that goes to the motor because I've got the hot wire coming from the battery going over to here in the, uh, the fuse block inside the captain's console and then the negative if it comes to here it goes back to the motor it doesn't actually make it back to the battery when this is in the off position so that's what I was trying to achieve, was to break the connection, not have a complete circuit from the positive back to the battery. Because if there's a short in there, you will ruin this battery. So by bringing the negative back over to here, no matter what, it goes back to here, but there's no connectivity from here back to the battery to ruin that battery. So that's what I'm gonna do is hook it up there. I don't think I'm gonna video that, but I'll show you in the picture right here where it goes and how that all goes together.